Uh, we can start. Elizabeth, you are officially the facilitator this week. Rock on. All right. Um, okay, so welcome to the DEI working group uh, for chaos. This is um, the meeting where we talk about diversity, equity, and inclusion metrics and other topics related to that in the chaos project. Um, for anybody who's new or who's watching this, who hasn't attended any chaos meetings. Uh, and also just a reminder that all of the chaos meetings are under the chaos code of conduct. So um, just keep that in mind as you interact with us here. Um, thank you for recording, Matt, and we can jump in. Uh, this meeting is a little different. We try to rotate facilitation. Um, you know, some of the other uh, chaos working groups have kind of a dedicated facilitator, but this is one of the meetings where we want to give others the opportunity to facilitate a meeting. Um, if you're new to the, the chaos community or, or you're, you've been here for a while and you've just never facilitated anything and you'd like to, um, that's, this is the place to do it because um, we can certainly help you with, with doing that. So if anybody wants to do it, Looks like Sean has already put his name in, or Matt put Sean's name in. Yeah, I think I think oh, I, vol Sean, I volunteered yeah. after like after you last time, so I said just put me on the next one. Rock on! All right, well, okay, Sean, you're up then next week. Um, yeah, and the next thing on the agenda is that all codes of conduct are updated. So, Matt, you want to talk about that? Uh, sure. Not much to talk about. Just that every repository is now pointing to the. Single code of conduct located in the org level .github repo and done is done. So. so if anyone sees anything else, anything other than that, um, they should maybe open an issue in that repository if they do see something straggling out there, but they've all been taken care of. So thank you for working on that project. I think Matt and Kevin, you, you all both did that. So that was Don, Don was the one who kind of gave me the document that did a scan for where everything was. And then I just used that document to like row by row, just track it down. Got you. Got you. But it's important work and we appreciate you doing that and keeping us all consistent and um, pointing to the same doc. <laughs> it's, it's, it's a good thing, especially with codes of conduct. Okay, the next one is the newcomer experience metric. <laughs> and Kevin and I both had this on our to-do list and neither one of us did it. So <laughs> I think, um, Kevin, if you have- I'm, I'm doing it right now, actually, oh as, my God. as we are speaking. Bless, you are amazing. Thank you so much. I really appreciate you doing that because that has been lingering out for a while. So thank you, Kevin, for doing that. Um, and the next item is also a, an action item for Elizabeth that Elizabeth did not do. So, <laughs> so I'm so sorry. I will definitely work on this um, and have this ready for next meeting. I just ran out of time. So apologies. And this was about the event location metric and trying to see if we should lump that into the uh, event location inclusivity metric, which I think we might be doing. So. Um, okay, moving along <laughs> off of Elizabeth, <laughs> um, some updates on the DEI.MD metrics. Who would like to talk about that? Um, I can I can go. So basically, we have the DEI.MD statement, and there has been discussion over a couple of weeks about, you know, what are the metrics that should be included here? And Kevin brought up some real nice points. And there were, it ended up being to include two new metrics, but then the ones that were kind of there before, you know what I mean, in that list of four, to move them down into later, um, later badging. So like recognizing contributors and project burnout, for example, were ones, I think those were the ones that were kind of in the original bronze. And the suggestion was to move them down. So we've done that. So as a result, it has required the creation of two new metrics, so communication transparency and project access, and those are both here. They are not done, but I think they're coming along real well. And so here's project access and here's communication transparency. And we can start with project access. And I think the, the one kind of balance in this metric is we talked about it, and then as Kevin and I were going through it, was project access versus project accessibility. And it was really towards the former, towards project access. So just 
um, just to kind of keep that clear for everybody. So if you're feeling a sense of questions about accessibility, we're trying to kind of stay away from that with respect to this metric. So, uh, sorry, go ahead. Kevin. So I, I do think that project access can be inclusive of accessibility, but I think that's a, uh, it's like a, a more focused kind of narrow look at it. Certainly. So it, it would be its own, it would be its own metric. Yep. And that, right. Fair enough. But it could be inclusive of access. Sure. Um, quick question then. Do you see um, accessibility being in this Say that again, Elizabeth. Um, do you see the project, or not necessarily project accessibility, but the accessibility component in the DEI.md file anywhere then, or? Maybe, I mean, it could be something that shows up later. Yeah, Kevin, I did mute you by the way, just so I might wanna unmute. Thank you, I, I appreciate it. I, I meant to mute myself and I must've missed. Uh, I, 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 would see, I would see that one that one does not exist currently, but I, I could see that one existing at a at a lower level uh, with kind of the way the, the the badging is set up to go from bronze all the way to is it platinum. Uh, I think we I think we kind of move from kind of levels of abstraction so at the uh, at the bronze level it's just we're really just talking about access period. Uh, and then as we get further down to platinum we start narrowing in that focus to to different to different acts uh aspects of, of that right so accessibility is maybe a, a platinum metric in my mind that's how i think of it anyway so i will just comment that i think it's pretty important to github to have accessibility low like like the at the bare minimum have some aspect of accessibility in these in in every level, I think they would like to see it in every level, but um, definitely in the bronze, it should be somewhere. I think it's pretty important to GitHub to have accessibility be something that projects are attending to. What's your definition of accessibility when you're when you're talking about that? Because uh, as as we've as we've already kind of talked about, project access is inclusive of accessibility, uh, but accessibility also kind of means some of these very specific things like uh color blindness you know it, it means uh you know screen, different screen readers was something yeah screen readers about. translations things of that nature and and so they those are kind of it's uh it's it's the next step from from project access right so project access you know first talks about you know the the availability and access to it uh, and then when we get to accessibility we're really more talking about uh, uh, access and equity right together i think i i see that are there are some accessibility things i think it would be great to have some I don't want to say more traditional views of accessibility, but maybe call out like where you have meetings that are globally friendly, and you could also say and closed ca or and captioned or you know instructions are provided like some something to kind of speak to that more traditional sense of um, accessibility with regard to um, visual impairment, hearing impairment, um, what, um, mobility issues, like whatever whatever we think. And I think closed caption is a good one. I think that um, even just saying, have you done a, a website audit uh, for accessibility? Because there's many tools, you know, that can just run an audit. So have you at least done that part? You know, things like that, I think would be great to add if we can, if people are cool with it. I, I know, I, I would just will say that I know that that's something that is really important to GitHub to add that in. Well, I think some of those things are already included in project access. It's just really a matter of how far, how focused we want to be in, in measurement, right? So the, because there's a lot of stuff that, that fits into that, that accessibility category. So if we're, if we're asking, if we're kind of asking them in different, 
uh, badging stages, right? Bronze to, to silver to gold, then it, then it would make sense to maybe have different levels of accessibility at those badging levels. And that's, that's what I was trying to get at prior. So we, at the bronze level, we ask about project access at a high level. And then maybe in the next badge or the badge after that, we focus, we focus more in on specific components of accessibility that, uh, that provide uh, equity for people. Yeah, and I know it's tricky because if we did have a separate project accessibility metric, to, to fit it into the DEI.MD means we would have to maybe split it up into like different things if we wanted to have that as a part of every level. Um, so I don't know how that would work. And I totally understand what you're saying, Kevin. Um, yeah. Right. At the bronze level, I do question if, it, if we did go, and I'm sorry, I'm not letting other people talk. Uh, if, if we do go all in on accessibility, I think we would have problems at the bronze level because most projects are not, I don't know that they're gonna, they're not gonna check all those boxes on accessibility. Uh, so access is that base is that base level that uh, that can get people thinking about accessibility. Yeah, but I think that's kind of the point. Like it, for so many people, it's an afterthought. It's like a, an extra thing you add on at the end, and like that's problematic in our in our industry anyway. So I think that I don't know. I don't know, man. I have a comment here. So the. I think calling this project, well, a couple things, calling it project access is the way to go here. Because I, I do think if we call it project accessibility, that definitely takes you to things like project or um, color blindness, like these very specific things associated with accessibility. At the same time, I don't necessarily have a problem of including things like this in in the implementation. So are they closed caption? Have you done a website audit for accessibility? Whatever some more, have you um, considered color blindness? Because in the bronze badging, we're not asking people to, to necessarily do all of these things. We're asking them to reflect on the things that they have done and share that with their community members. So it is quite possible that somebody is not currently providing closed captioning and they would just report that. But they are doing a lot of these other things. They're being globally attentive. They're thinking about like global mentorship or whatever it might be on this list. You know, we're doing a lot of these things, but we're not doing all. And so I, I think it's okay to include them here. I don't see, and if somebody's doing it, great. And you'd like to be recognized and that might help GitHub as well by saying we have this thing called project access. And we do, I mean, unless they really want projects to do very specific things, which we, we have, we just are not asking for in badging. We're not saying you must do this one thing. I, I think, I think it would be great if we had like a comprehensive list of all of the things that could be done around accessibility specifically, like colorblindness, contrast, mobile checking audits, like, all, all of those things and I, I have no problem with that here yeah. um, I was just looking sorry I, I saw this talk when I was out at uh, scale this woman did a talk on accessibility and I just learned so much and there's so much that folks can do and I didn't even know so I mean maybe I can share this or um, I don't know we, maybe we can think about it a little bit more but I know we also want to just ship it and so I don't want to discuss it further you know what I mean like I don't mean to just keep dragging this on forever but um I'm just trying to be attentive to what like mm -hmm. what's important to GitHub I think it's fine to add it but yeah. just so they know I mean it would be possible for somebody to kind of get a, a like recognition on attending to project access without doing any of the things you're talking about like in the in the talk under this current design yeah and i and i and i do still think there was there would be value in creating a accessibility metric that does focus on on those specific things uh possibly two one that one that focuses on uh 
accessibility built into the artifact uh, and one that would focus on accessibility around the work that a project does. Yeah, that's interesting. Uh, and then it would be it would be very easy to edit this metric, the project access metric, uh, to just say that it's inclusive of these two other metrics. So my own the thing that I think if we do that, Kevin, that we would want to sort out is the potential of like the confound that would be created by having project access and project accessibility for people like maybe rename this one to something else with an anticipation that we're going to create a project accessibility metric. And I, I was thinking maybe it wouldn't be project accessibility, it would be something or something, or something, something else, else accessibility. Yeah, just uh, just so they don't get in the way of each other is right. So software accessibility could look at the accessibility that's built into the software artifact and then uh there could be a, a different accessibility that's not project that would focus on the accessibility of the work that's being done on github repos and in collaboration or on the collaborative platforms uh, but i don't think those have to be created before this metric gets published and and i and i do agree that this uh that list of things that uh, that are there, I think those are all uh, uh, applicable. So, uh, so we can we can definitely include some traditional accessibility kind of those Nielsen Norman things uh, in that list. What do you think, Elizabeth? Do you just want to add a few things to the list here? Yeah, and I'm also wondering if there's like um, a, a list of resources or something that we could link to here instead of like re listing okay here's all the different things you can do for accessibility like maybe just i don't know pointing people to an external thing and to say here's the list go look at that and see what you can i don't know i don't know so there there actually are there are ieee standards and uh other standards bodies that uh that do accessibility and the uh the the one that I had just kind of mentioned earlier was the Nielsen Norman stuff. They kind of uh, they kind of own accessibility, so we could actually point to Nielsen Norman uh, for that. All right, I say own, but they they do a lot of accessibility research, and they were the kind of the first researchers to, or one of the first groups of researchers to kind of look at it. But there are IEEE standards as well. Yeah, I think that um, the uh, the uh, organizations that this person who gave this talk referred to were the Interna International Web Accessibility Laws and Guidelines, the w and then there's WCAG, and they have different levels of like how well you're doing with accessibility in your software and your your UX and stuff like that. So maybe, yeah, maybe we could Maybe just... that's, yeah, like attention to published standards. Yeah, yeah, maybe yeah, yeah, yeah. Would be the thing standards. here. Mm -hmm. I like that actually the best. Because they, from what she said, they're, you know, they're always adding more standards and more things that can be done as, you know, just software evolves. And so it would be hard for us to keep up with that. So why don't, could you add that, just a safe yeah. statement here? Yes, I will. And we can, we can move that to the... So I, I will say a lot of the, a lot of those standards are... Oh. Sorry, go ahead. I was, I was gonna say, I will say a lot of those standards are kind of artifact or software centric. Uh, so, and, and we do kind of have we do kind of have accessibility on those two different levels where we are talking about accessibility built into the, the software artifacts. Uh, but this, the project access, this document is really more about accessibility 
around the uh, the project itself, right? The the work of the project and it the is. software. Yeah. Yep. Just so being able just, to engage. Uh, just a note, and it, it doesn't change anything. It's yeah, I agree. Okay, um, but again, just as if people could take a look at this metric, maybe Elizabeth, could you give it a read? I mean, I think it's pretty well along, to be honest with you, between the conversations we've had here and then the changes that I had made and then the edits that Kevin had done. You know what I mean? There may be some smaller things, but it'd be great to have another look at this from folks that aren't Kevin and me. And then probably just add those reference pointers down here. That you're referring to, Elizabeth. Got you. Okay. Any other comments on this? I think it reads real well, to be honest with you. I like the metric. Yeah, I think it reads well as well. All right, let's um, so access. So I just want to say thank you, everybody, for being open to that conversation. I really appreciate that. Thank you. Um, and then AI, Elizabeth, give it a fresh read. Thanks. Okay, great. Um, can we move on to communication transparency? All good? All right, so uh, communication transparency. So uh, this is our first draft on communication transparency. And um, here you go. So um, Kevin, I, I just, just so you know, like a lot of like this kind of stuff, you know, that I'm highlighting here is just this note that's moved up. I just put it into the text kind of stuff. Um, I had tried to to like write it like here's what doing can how it can help you kind of thing. So um, that was kind of the angles that I was trying to take there. It um, was a it was a pretty rough pass. Oh for, yeah, no no no, me. not I, uh... a criticism at all. I'm just trying to tell you where I was going. Um, and so really the the premise of this is that. As a project, like what are you doing to um, ensure that that everybody can have an opportunity to communicate inside or or understand the communication that's occurring within a project? You know, so that it's not uh, just always private communications, and that you're, for example, sharing the the meeting minutes publicly, and you're enabling people to participate in all of the meetings and th these kind of, this is what communication transparency is about. Um, so at least that's how I read it. And I, I liked it because um, it actually made me reflect even in the in our chaos project of just about, oh, there's things like perhaps even the number of channels, which can, I go back and forth because that can be a challenge because you do have to have some channels that are like globally distributed, which helps include other people globally, but that also increases the number of channels just because you're having them at weird times. So I mean, it's a funny balance, right? I mean, there's no perfect, perfect thing here on, on transparency. So I think it's just really, how are you as an organization making an effort to, to make sure that the communication that you have, wherever it may be, is, is transparent for all. And through that transparency, that can help with uh, inclusivity in the project to include people um, and give them an opportunity to understand what's been talked about and also kind of find what they would like to participate in as well and feel that they have a chance to do that. Kevin, did I hit that from the, at least from an overview perspective? Uh, yes. Yeah, definitely. Right on. So, if um, do we not want to link to 
documentation discoverability here or right here. I just hadn't added it. Oh, you added it down there. Okay. Yeah. Or Oh, I just Oh, you left you left it there. Okay. You did, deleted it from the uh description. From, from the description. Yeah. And Okay. Groups, yeah. Um so could I Kevin, would you mind if I just kind of accepted these changes? Uh, yeah, yeah, go ahead. Just to make it readable and we could give people an opportunity to give it like a five minute read or something like that. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I, I will say I did not. Oh, the one question I had, Kevin, that kind of came up was, well, let's just see what people think first. Okay. Okay. I did have a comment about the uh, uh, aligning, transparency aligning with the uh, rules of the community oh, that was that was mine that was actually okay. my question i didn't know what the rules of a community were you know that was all i didn't i just didn't know what you meant by that okay so the uh that particular comment uh was was put in to to address the uh uh the idea that a that a project can have different levels of transparency and certain levels of governance may require different levels of transparency Okay, so, so maybe instead of rules, what if we said like governance? I actually, I actually had, I started with that. I changed it to rules okay. of the community, but I, but I actually uh, aligned with project governance is what I had initially said. Okay. Okay. Uh, so the, the idea being there that, uh, uh, for example, uh, the in chaos, the board meetings are not, you know, we don't record those. We don't no. uh, show those board meetings. And that's kind of per the per the way the the project is designed, right? So yeah. it's not necessarily that's not necessarily a transparency issue. It's the that level of transparency has been chosen for that particular right level of governance. And the the same can be said for like a a code of conduct discussion. We may not want to have that right be transparent. So we do. I think we do need to have some some way of allowing for the different levels of transparency so the, so the question then becomes we're not just measuring the levels of transparency in the project but we're also measuring whether that level of transparency matches with project governance oh okay right? that makes more sense when i was that governance makes more sense to me so okay so maybe just as you're reading that if we could just take like five or ten minutes to have people give this a read and just see how it resonates with you. That would be really good. Can we take five or 10 minutes? I can share it here in the chat as well. Oops. Uh, Elizabeth already did, but you know. Oh, way to go. All right. <laughs> <laughs> All right. See you in about five or 10. Thank you. 
All right, how are people doing? I feel pretty good. Mary Blessing or Delight, I don't know if you're taking a look at this. Elizabeth, Kevin, not sure if you're taking a look at it. How are you feeling? Yeah, I'm logged in as CAS community, so. Oh, that's you. Okay. Now kind of just, <laughs> I really from the same. I was just trying to add the, uh, the alignment bit back up. Otherwise I was letting everyone else edit. it. Okay. Elizabeth, on your read, how did it, did it make sense? Oh yeah, I like it a lot. Yeah, also for me, I do like it. Um, also, I was wondering, so after the board members say have a decision, at what point does it get to the rest of the community or it doesn't at all? Um, so typically we share minutes after a board meeting. So we have tried to put those out. So that- oh, okay. Yeah, that would be. And then, I don't know, I suppose we would talk about them uh, in a community meeting. To be real honest, Mary Blessing, there aren't a lot of decisions that get made in the board. <laughs> it's mostly informational session. And then, Kevin, were you okay with the changes where it's at now? I mean, does it still have the spirit of what you had written on the first pass? Uh, yeah, yeah, I did. I did want to make sure that uh, we added that the bit in about aligning with governance, though. Yep, I saw that. Uh, but other, but otherwise, yeah, everything else is is fine. Okay. Uh, and then, and an improvement over what was there prior. Okay. All right. Cool. Um, Sean, did you have any comments on it? No, I mean, I made several edits, but no. Okay. Sounds good. I well, mean, maybe... I think it's ready to go. Okay. Well, um, I'll maybe before the next meeting, what I'll do is I'll just take the action item to kind of go through these edits and just make sure, you know, like accept and then give it a read and make sure that it reads well kind of thing. And I can bring it to the meeting next time. Um, and then, I mean, kind of thinking out loud, I mean, it's quite possible that by the end of the next meeting, we would have all four bronze level metrics essentially available, which would be great. Um, what would uh, would tools or data collection strategies look like for, for this one? Well, do we do we have any thoughts on that or? I don't know that we have any tools. I mean, I guess in all of most of these situations, I um just kind of keep going to things like surveys so we we do sometimes offer like sample survey questions you know like not an entirely developed survey but you know just like i feel like to community members i feel that um communication is transparent to me and decision making within the project is clear i don't know something like that i, I do know in for for badging i think we're asking them to just reflect on these things so mm -hmm. it doesn't necessarily have to have a tool connected mm -hmm. to it but, uh, okay i mean how about this before next time what i'll do um probably not a tool but a data collection strategy i can come up with maybe half a dozen questions that could probably be asked in a survey if you wanted to ask your community members and that would be pretty pretty straightforward enough coming out of this metric you could also um, have them do like a, an a internal audit of like who has access to this channel, everyone, some some people or nobody, you know, something like that. You could have them kind of think about it that way. I mean, the audit could even be as simple as take a look at, for example, in Slack and take a look at how many of your channels are private. 
what the yeah, volume like, of communication that's occurring in them is. And, and, then, and then ask yourself, right, I mean, should this be private? <laughs> you know, is it okay for it to be private? Um, but I suppose in an audit, if you saw that 80% of your Slack channels were private. <laughs> yeah, that should be a signal of something. <laughs> <laughs> Reflect on that. All right, cool. Um, Okay. Great. I forgot I was still facilitating. You are, are we... facilitating. Because <laughs> I feel like we've come to a conclusion on that topic. And we do have some action items. And we have five minutes left, right? So um, yeah. you want to talk about the README real quick? Well, I decided to put it in here. I don't know if this is necessarily the appropriate place to talk about the README, but I was just trying to circulate this thing, I had kind of shared uh, some potential changes to the README. And I'm just trying to make sure all people see it. This is kind of the after the code of conduct thing. <laughs> I'm thinking about readmes now in the repositories. So we need to change the README for the DEI working group? Well, this is, I, I, this is nothing to be changed yet. This is just okay. a proposal of a new structure and um, like of course, like when I'm putting it together, like this would be the README at least I think for the working groups. Like I, I don't, this doesn't fit every README, and I don't think kind of like code of conduct that we can have a standard thing that everybody points to. So I'm not. Anyway, this the, my intention was around working groups, like like the DEI working group or the common working group or risk. Yeah, I might, yeah. I don't know if you're all looking at it, but I can share my screen. So it was really just meant to simplify a lot of things is the intention here. So a brief overview. So um, a link to the agenda in the minutes a brief overview of the working group. The focus areas, this may get some feedback, but the focus area is just simply pointing to the spreadsheet as opposed to keeping a table in the README. Those seem to get out of sync really fast. Release metrics is just simply pointing to the, the release metrics page. Um, new contributors just points to our getting started page, maintainers, two people, core contributors, two people, winner to the license, and then copyright is now just contributors to the chaos project. See, I'm just trying to like really simplify this thing now <laughs> is what I'm trying yeah, to Yeah, 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 perfect. I mean, I, I've applied it. I, I think for most of our repos, it generally works. Like you said, there may be a few that it doesn't work for. Yeah, I mean, I think the template doesn't have to be like absolutely strict. Like if there's a little bit of a uh, something that isn't applicable, then that's okay to leave it out. But a lot of it was just kind of like doing this kind of stuff, like yeah. pointing out somewhere else where we have, because we obviously run yeah. this all the time. Yeah, like I think the software projects probably this doesn't apply to. Exactly. But. So I'm, I'm totally open to comments, other comments, reactions, yeses and noes. I don't particularly care. I got rid of all, like all contributors. We remember we had that huge contributor list that was, I'm suggesting to just remove that. All right. <laughs> Looks good. <laughs> yeah, I think I think we're all good with it. Okay. Um, again, I'm not going to do anything with this yet. I want to bring it to common tomorrow. I'd like to bring it to the general meeting. You know what I mean? Kind of just what I had done with the codes of conduct, just letting everybody know kind of what's happening here. 
so I guess maybe the, I mean, the other thing is probably what I should do is I should take a look at the, we have like 48 repositories right now. Many of them are software related and just kind of ask where this would apply. I, th I think that's a good approach. All right, that's it on that one. Awesome. I think that's it on our agenda too. Okay. Yep. Perfect timing. All right. I'll see some of you in a meeting shortly. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> I'll see you later. Right, bye. Bye. bye.